Hello and welcome all. My name is James and this is That Med Guy, where we discuss everything EMS related. If this is your first time, welcome aboard. I do my best to post every Monday. I do my best. Today we will be discussing three things about saturation probes that we all should know about, including me, namely the PI, the SPMET and the SPCO. In fact, I had to go research the stuff myself and this is why I love teaching. It keeps me on my toes. First, if you don't know what a SATS probe is and how it works, first check out this video. I will link it above where I discuss everything about saturation probes and the basics of the light and the absorption. All right, so what is PI? PI is the perfusion index and it looks like this on a Zoll. This is the ratio of pulsatile blood flow to the non-pulsatile blood in the peripheral tissue, meaning the difference between the tissue that is receiving pulsatile blood and that which is not. In a state of vasoconstriction, you will see a drop in the PI as less blood is getting to the tissue, but your saturation will remain normal. So pretty much PI is an indirect and non-invasive measure of peripheral perfusion. So local constriction or a will cause a decrease in PI and vasodilation will cause an increase in PI. There is no normal value. A baseline needs to be made with each patient. This could be used to estimate the volume status of a patient. Um, this could be used to assess the pain in a patient who is anesthesized. And as it will increase and decrease with, um, with pain, because pain causes vasoconstriction. And, and any drug that causes sedation will also cause vasodilation. So a drop in PI could mean that the patient is in pain. This would be useful in a patient who is paralyzed. In newborns with high pulse and a low PI, this will show that they are quite critical. So second, SPMET stands for methemoglobin and looks like this on a Zoll. Hemoglobin normally has two ions and methemoglobin adds a third ion, making it so that the hema cannot carry the O2. It is bluish, chocolate brown in color. A higher level of methemoglobin will tend to cause a pulse oximeter to read closer to 85% regardless of the true oxygen saturation level. It is caused by a medication such as benzocaine, lignocaine, nitroglycerin, inhaled nitrous oxide and some antibiotics. Normally, 1-2% to of a person's hemoglobin is in meth hemoglobin. So 1-2% to would be about normal. Less than 10% meth hemoglobin has no symptoms. 10-20% to meth hemoglobin will cause skin discoloration. 20-30% to meth hemoglobin will cause anxiety, headaches, dyspnea on exhaustion. 30-50% to meth hemoglobin will cause fatigue, confusion, dizziness, tachypnea, and palpitation. 50-70% to meth hemoglobin, coma, seizures, arrhythmias, and acidosis. Getting much worse. Greater than 70%, you're dead. Not good. Interestingly, upon exiting the body, blood stains caused by patients with high meth hemoglobin will actually change from bright red to a brown, like a dark brown color. So if you get blood on something, it'll go from red to brown. Very interesting. The treatment for meth hemoglobin is methylene blue. It looks something like this. It's a blue vial and it is the primary treatment. And it should only be given for symptomatic meth hemoglobinemia, meth hemoglobinemia. It is given at a dose of one to two milligrams per kilogram, up to a total of 50 milligrams. And finally, in terms of saturation, carbon monoxide poisoning, so SPCO. This should be familiar as carbon monoxide is very common. It is colorless, odorless gas. It is a byproduct of the incomplete combustion of any carbon containing material. Carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin at the same site as oxygen, creating carboxyhemoglobin with approximately 120 times more greater affinity than oxygen does. Signs and symptoms would be headaches, dizziness, confusion, nausea, vomiting, kind of looks like someone with anemia. So you will see tachycardia and tightness sort of thing. Carboxyhemoglobin has a half-life of four to six hours. This can be reduced to 70 to 35 minutes with O2. And with additional hyperbaric chamber, this can even be reduced even lower. And that about sums it up. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know if you have any other topics you would like me to cover. And guys, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please just drop them below and keep well and keep safe. Bye for now.